Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. There were a lot of things that I figured I could do today. Um, I could talk about the Graf Zeppelin. I could do some destroyer videos, but I don't really have that much time this week because it's school holidays. And so I figured I'll do something that I wanted to do for a long time. And I promise I'll, I'll do a longer video about one of the things that you requested next week. But for now, today, this week, we're going to be looking at the British tech tree. And this was the first tech tree that I uh, that I ground all the way through up to tier 10. So I kind of know a little bit about these ships and what they can and can't do. And let's walk through it. As usual, we ignore the first three tiers because, you know, they just you, you skip over them relatively quickly. Uh, Tier 4 is where, it's be, where it becomes interesting and where you would start playing a little bit longer. So let's start with the Danae at Tier 4. So the, the British Tech Tree is cruisers, by the way, all the way through, light cruisers. This is um, the only Tech Tree that has light cruisers all the way up to Tier 10. So the Danae at Tier 4. British, British cruiser, she has relatively little health. She has ver relatively poor armor, and this is something you're going to be finding all the way across. These things absolutely do not like getting shot at. They are relatively fast, though, and um, decently maneuverable. And here you see the thing that makes the British Light Cruiser line special. It's the guns. So the Danae has 652mm guns, 7.5 second reload, nothing spectacular in, in Tier 4. But, um, you might notice, they only shoot armor-piercing. So British ships are a bit special in that. In that they, don't sh they don't shoot high explosive. And then you'll realize, once you get up to tier 9 and 10, why that is. But um, it's, it's really irritating if you have to deal with, uh, with, with things and you can't set them on fire. Especially if you're in a light cruiser. So, to make up for that, that you actually can't burn down battleships, they have torpedoes. And they have nice, relatively nice torpedoes. So on tier 4 and the Dane here, we've got the 533mm torpedoes. They don't do a huge amount of damage, but um, they reload reasonably quickly. They've got 5.7km range, so already here better than than uh, the German cruisers. And she's got 12 of them. With uh, with um, triple launchers, two, two triple launchers on each side. So that's, um, that's a reasonable amount of torpedoes. And also... The British light cruisers can fire torpedoes in in selective spread. So you can either fire a wide spread, or you can single fi single fire them wherever you want them to be, which um, means you can fire them in very very narrow spreads if you're quite sure of what you're hitting, and making life very miserable for other people. Uh, in terms of anti-aircraft, she has almost nothing, which isn't uncommon at this tier, and 7.8 kilometer surface detection is pretty average as well. So let's move up to tier 5, the Emerald. The Emerald has a bit more hit points at last. She's still a light cruiser, still paper for armor, but she's quick. She gets uh, 750 millimeter guns. The same thing again, armor piercing only. They do a really nice amount of damage against destroyer and, and other light cruisers, but you will get bounces on battleships and anything that's heavily armored. So again, here come the torpedoes into play, and it's pretty much the same story here. You've got the 12 launchers, and you've got the individual selectable torpedo, rate, uh, torpedo arcs. She gets a slight improvement in terms of anti-aircraft armament. Let's move on to tier 6. This is where it starts, you know, tier 5, tier 6 is usually where, gaming where the game starts becoming a little bit more competitive. So, um, the Leander, tier 6, bit more health, bit more armor this time around, it's still not great, but it's a bit better. And uh, again, good turn time. She gets uh, 8 152mm guns, still with a 7.5 second, uh, second reload, but uh, still an armor piercing. These things are the banes of this destroyer, of mid-tier destroyers. Because they fire reasonably quickly, they fire accurately, and their armor piercing does a lot of damage against destroyers. And this is also where the problem starts with the British tech, uh, the British cru light cruiser line. Because unlike the tier 5 light cruiser, the tier 6 one only gets two quad launchers. 
Now this is a cruiser, they're not center mounted, which means you can only fire four torpedoes in one side, um, previously you could fire six of them. Okay, they do a bit more damage, and 6.3 kilometers in a bad range, but you only get four of them. So you gotta stop, uh, fire four, turn around, fire the other four. That's why she gets a smoke generator. So the play here is stay away from anything that can hurt you, which is battleships and pretty much all other cruisers. Uh, if you need to deal with them, get within get within torpedo range, smoke up, uh, fire your spreads, and then get out of there before the smoke dissipates again. She gets um, starts getting a decent amount of anti-aircraft guns. Uh, that's a pattern again we're going to see through the lines. So once you're, it's doable, but the the lack of number of torpedoes really starts hurting here. And the same goes in tier seven for the Fiji. Fiji is a nice ship, but again, you get okay amount of armor, not great by any means, and it's a light cruiser, easy to citadel. You get 12 150mm guns. You still get the 7.5 second reload. Uh, so they're basically the same guns as the, as the other ones. And you only get two triple launches of torpedoes now. So previously you had, you had eight torpedoes if you fired from both sides, now we only get six. Okay, they have a bit of a better reload, they do a okay amount of damage, but we're in T7 by now. You have to deal with battleships that have a decent health pool. And that's when the British cruiser line really, really starts hurting. Because you just can't damage them easily with the armor piercing. They will bounce most of the time unless you do superstructure hits and try to do these, uh, try to do these reliably at range with plunging fire. Not something you can easily do. So... The lack of torpedoes with the Fiji is really, really hurting at this point. She does get a decent amount of anti-air, and uh, she also gets the anti-air uh, the air defense alert, plus the smoke generator from previously. So at this point, you start wondering, why would I even continue? They give me less and less torpedoes. Battleships eat me for breakfast. I get Citadel like this, like there's no armor whatsoever. Um, specialized, specialized ships, definitely specialized ships. The Edinburgh at tier 8, and you've ground and ground, you get 1250mm guns, 7.5 second reload, same thing as previously. You get your quad launchers again. Great, but now you're at tier 8, you're facing tier 9 battleships. You're facing things like American battleships, which have actual decent torpedo defenses. And you only do about 3000 uh, points of damage and your reload time is longer than previously. So, gah! Annoying to play through. This has been a terrible grind up to t through T8 on the Edinburgh. You do get a decent amount of anti-air at this point. That's something to be given, and you get a better smoke generator. And um, you can you can play the anti -air, the air defense. You can play the um, you can play the destroyer defense. But um, anything else at long range, your 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 shells mostly bounce off pretty much everything else if you get close if you want to get closer you get shred to bits so this has been exhausting i can tell you that much but then you come to tier 9 and that's when it all starts paying off tier 9 the neptune so this ship i loved this ship i hated everything from starting from tier 6 up to tier 8 it was a ter it, it was not fun and i didn't use free xp to get through it i actually ground through it the edinburgh as the Edinburgh, the Neptune. Um, still armor, like, not much, really. Fast. Uh, maneuverability gets a little tricky, so it's definitely worth um, using the maneuverability setup. 1252mm guns, but 5.5 second reload. So that's when it starts making a difference, because with 5.5 second reload on these things, even if you can't set fire, uh, you can start raining a just an enormous amount of shells onto enemy ships you can smoke up you get three smoke screens you can smoke up um, and you can start raining death and destruction even on heavily armored ships and even if if a third of them or half of them bounce off you can still fire enough you can still throw enough stuff at the wall that some of it sticks really so this is the point where you can start actually hurting hev heavily armored ships with uh, the 150 millimeter guns and look at the torpedoes, look at them, 16 torpedoes. 
Okay, 60 second reload, yep, given. 7.8 kilometer range though, and decent amount of damage. And you get 16 of them, and you can fire them in very, very narrow spreads. You can fire them between islands where you normally can't get torpedo spreads through. And you have 16 of them, which means you can smoke up, or stealth, stealth fire if you can, like from, from concealment, ambush fire. Um, smoke up, turn around, and fire the other eight um, in, in the direction. And that can sink enemy battleships. So this is when I started having fun. And look at the anti-air, right? Plus you get the air defense alert. So she can do, she can do uh, unpleasant things to enemy carriers. I've had games where carriers try to focus me and they, uh, I've shot down 40, 50 airplanes. And then once you're done with that, you come to tier 10, the Minotaur. And this is where I currently am. Again, smoke, uh, the smoke generator, air defense alert. We've got 35,000 hit points. Armor is still not grand. It's still the same story. Uh, good, tur good turn time. She only gets 10 instead of 12 guns, but she gets a 3.5 second reload on these things. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Talk, talk, talk about rate of fire with this thing. 3.5 second reload on 10 152mm guns. Yes, you still only fire armor piercing, but I challenge you to come close to this thing in a destroyer or in another cruiser. <laughs> really anything. Um, you stay away from battleships, obviously. You don't go into close, close quarters. But um, she also gets the excellent torpedoes with upgraded damage, 16 torpedoes, single spread possible, capable, and only one minute reload time for the six uh, for these. And she gets a relatively murderous amount of anti-aircraft defense. So this is where I'm at. This is at tier 10, and this is great fun. This ship is great fun. So let's take a little bit of a closer look and see how I've set her up. I have uh, changed her uh, for for the elite. I've changed the um, the main battery traverse because this yes ship hit points would have been great. Um, a little bit more large uh, AA would have been great, but twenty percent uh, main battery traverse is amazing because it saves me from having to use the traverse mod. So if we look at the at the traverse speed for the, um, I'm actually getting twenty four degrees torre traverse. So it means. I can, I can maneuver like crazy in the ship, and I almost immediately get the turret swung around and uh, ready to fire again. So I have gotten actually the, uh, the shell dispersion modification. Um, honestly, the reload mod wouldn't have done very much with a 3.5 second base reload, but um, the, the shell is because the, these, these are 150 millimeter shells. They don't have the greatest shell velocity in the world. They take quite a while to get to the uh, to get to where they're supposed to land, so um, getting them more on point is a good thing. And since I could use the uh, elite bonus for the for the turret traverse, I could use the the actual mod uh, modification slot for the dispersion. I've got uh, steering both steering gear mods because again, you cannot get hit in this thing. You don't have the armor to tank anything. And you're facing tier 10 battleships with what 420, 460 millimeter guns, you will get citadeled and you will get hurt very, very badly. So that's uh, that's her. I've got in terms of supplies, the improved crew rations. I actually got um, got the preventative maintenance pack in this for once because I really need all the health I can get. And I've got the speed and traverse speed on the refined diesel. In terms of captain skills, this is the commander I've been um, I've been using from from the beginning. I've just kind of brought him along as as things went, and I'm almost almost got him up at level eleven, which I am really looking forward to, and we get to that in a minute. So commander skills, what do we got? Uh, we've got the obvious torpedo ones. I've got the artillery maintenance to get um, a bit better dispersion still. I've got the air defense expert because if you are being focused by a carrier. Oh, this ship just destroys airplanes like no tomorrow. Other than that, um, survivalist for HP recovery, generalist for resistance. I've got the fully pre prepared for the repair kit uh, cooldown. Um, I must have skill on British light cruisers, it's Mistweaver, just because, uh, I mean, adrenaline rush would be interesting, 
but just because uh, the smoke screens are really, really something that you need. It's it's they're essential to your play in these things. So having uh, longer smoke screens, bigger smoke screens, and being able to deploy them again quicker is a great thing. Um, next level, I've got the demolition expert, just because that was the only thing that kind of made sense. Uh, I have actually got on a sh um, on a seeker here. I could have as well gone with uh, something like compartment maintenance. Uh, they, they don't get rapid reload, so this wouldn't have made, made sense. But um, meh, I figured why not. I don't think it makes it makes a huge amount of difference because uh, getting a medal. If you if you get the first strike in these things, and you can, then this becomes really 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 useful because it improves your damage by a little bit. The one thing that I am looking forward to, and I don't know yet what the impact of that's going to be, is the armor piercing cut shell. Because, of course, uh, IFHE doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because you can't shoot high explosive on British light cruisers. But the armor piercing cut shell increases the penetration and um, also the sustainability over long range. So, if that means I get more more reliable pens on 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 armor targets at range with the fire rate this thing can output, that is going to make a huge difference. But um, we we shall see, and I'll sure I'll be sure to update you once I actually get to this point. But for now, uh, let's let's take it for a, for a drive, shall we? All right. Uh... Looks like we're mostly fighting bots. We're on a counter. It's a common map for tier 10. So let's see what we can do. Okay, bots are going to be rushing. We got three DDs on the enemy team. One of the Fletchers is an actual player. And we have no carriers and it's just cruisers. No battleships. Okay, so here you see the, here you see the torpedo spread. This is the wide spread. And this is the single torpedo spread. Leave it on wide for starters. And uh, find ourselves a position where we can stop and ambush a couple of people. T10 battles can get rather stressy. I mean, if you're playing against bots, not necessarily, but um, they do have a tendency to rush. And uh, they can overwhelm you if you're not careful. Okay, there's the enemy Baltimore. So he's probably spotted for someone else. Okay. Smoke up and guns out. It's one of the Fletchers. And look at the fire rate and these guns. So watch out that we're not getting torpedoed. There's the actual player. Not yet running the torpedoes out because uh, bot ships have a tendency to steer interestingly and randomly and they're very hard to hit with torpedoes. Okay. At this point we're going to need to start moving. Smoke's expired. We can probably finish this Baltimore off with guns. And we're going to get a spread of torpedoes out on the other one. See if he can dodge those. And we gotta watch out because the Fletcher goes for our cap. So we're gonna have to turn around and defend that. Uh, he's taking a couple and he's flooding. Should be able to finish him off with guns. Okay, that's that. Okay. I'm gonna watch out for that enemy Fletcher because if he goes for the cap. Okay. Where is he? There he is. Okay, so he stays behind. That's fine. Is he coming around? Or not? Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna open up again. Can stay behind as long as he doesn't go for our cap. Oh, that's a new bookie. So you see the the uh, armor piercing does relatively reliable damage. 
And it does that even against heavily armored tar uh, targets. Oh, there's the Fletcher. Hello. Okay, speed up. And against destroyers, it's absolutely murderous because of the rate of fire and the damage being done. Let's see if he gets torps out against me. Turn in just to be sure. Can we lob? No, we can't. But we can shoot at the Baltimore. Slow down. Just in case he comes around to torp me. I get two spreads of torpedoes out this way if he comes around here. And reverse. See if we can get the Baltimore killed. No, he actually moved on. Okay. Can, come on, can we kill that Baltimore? Couple more shots. That's the Baltimore. Shots out against the Fletcher. Is he turning? Yes, he's turning. Okay. We're winning on points at this point, but I don't want to make. Don't want to. Yeah, even if he kills the cruiser, we should be good. So we got a minute ten. He's over there somewhere. Uh, let's see and make sure that this Ibuki survives. And if not, that we kill the Fletcher after he torps the Ibuki. Okay, where is he? Is he lurking behind that island? Uh, the Ibuki can go first, bait the torp. I'm turning in just in case. Yeah, we spotted, but where? Where is he? Okay, where you are? Where are you, Fletcher? There you are. Okay. Speed up. He's got torps out against the Ibuki. Where are you? There you are. Kill him? Where are you? A couple more hits. No, he survives. Gets away with it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, wasn't enough because we got most of the rest and that's that's the Minotaur in a nutshell um, we did we did 60,000 damage with the guns only 17,000 with the torpedoes that's because we haven't really seen uh, battleships or any other bigger targets um, I can easily do over 100 with this thing and um, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you a game I've played I've played previously uh, not too long ago but um, uh, you, you have a ridiculous rate of fire with this thing. You have, um, you have, um, the torpedoes, 16 torpedoes. You can do massive amounts of damage. And, uh, you, you can, you, you don't have the, uh, the tankiness, but you can do long range plunging fire against battleships, which uh, penetrate the superstructure or the deck armor and, uh, do, uh, mostly, say, uh, mostly half pens, some full pens. I think with the uh, um, uh, armor piercing cap shell, we can do more full pens. And just the sheer amount of fire she can put out is is just astonishing. Plus, you've got the torpedoes, which means you can't be rushed by destroyers. You can use them on single spread in very interesting patterns. You can use them uh, against battleships. Uh, you've got the smoke, and you've got the anti aircraft. So uh, let me just. Um, let me just quickly show you show you what I was talking about uh, from my battle records. I think, it, yeah, this one. So we did in this game. Uh, we actually played against the full set of, um, of of enemy players. I wish I had recorded that one. Sorry, but uh, the carrier was trying to focus me. You can see thirty aircraft down, and um, and I did um, 
well, 50,000 damage with the guns, 50,000 damage with torpedoes. That's uh, that's usually kind of, and you can get you can get a clear sky with um, with a minotaur without problems. So that's kind of the the sort of games you can get with a minotaur. You play her, you can play her aggressively, you can play her defensively with the smoke screens. She's extremely versatile in 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 what you can do with her, and um, the firepower of this ship is just ridiculous. So I certainly love this. Games can be really stressful, uh, stressful because a lot of people have, um, well, actually a really good idea of what they're doing, and if you just rush out in the open, then uh, things get things get um, get bad very quickly for you. But uh, you can have amazing games in this ship, and and she's great fun. So that's it for this week. Uh, we'll see what we do next week. But for now, I wish you all a good weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.